Are we going? Is this lucky number 13? All right, 25 minutes on the clock. Welcome to Review, the episode's episodic series, which now has a playlist linked in the top comment in the description, which goes over my old videos to discuss, describe and discuss, which I'm tired, it's fine. Um, what is still good and relevant? Uh, we ended on the JBL Loft 40s and 30s, which I said were, were good, but you know, they're, they're so cheap, no one buys them anymore. The Arist Audio Huron uh, 5. That was the most expensive headphone amp before I've ever used, and I've sold it. It's since been sold. And it was like a five whopper channel, single-ended, beautiful piece of machinery. And I picked it up for like $380. It was at a hi-fi meet in Long Island. And it was like, it was, it was, it was people were, were bidding on it, and I bid like the most amount. And I was like, fuck it, I'm Zeos from Z Reviews. And this is four years ago, so trust me, financially, that was a risk. But I wanted like a completely done package, like give it to me, give me the best amplifier. And it had its fucking, its charms, but it never like, like as soon as the 789 comes out, which is like, in an, I had it for like a year and a half. Then there was like, it just I just kept getting more and more amplifiers. It just was like, this is not the be all end all. I actually have an Arist um, R2R DAC downstairs, one from Mastrop. And that thing is freaking amazing. I just wish the power supply didn't explode. So I need to get that back in order because that's a single-ended R2R little baby DAC. And I love the way that sounds, but Arist, yes, that particular amp, no. The fuck is a Peachtree DAC ITX? I have no idea. I I'm gonna assume that it was way too expensive. Why doesn't it preview the actual, what does this play button do? Did they change it? It used to like show me things. I'm in Chrome instead of Firefox. That might be doing it. No, no, no. No, go away. No, no telegram right now. Uh, so yeah, I don't think the Peach Tree Jack was just, it was too expensive for the lack of features. Um, the SMSL M6, that was a weird boy that had volume control. What was a, a DAC amp combo that used a joystick, like an up, down, left, right, push button joystick and a little screen and a quarter inch output. I, I don't know how, how did, you, did you own them? Did anybody own one of those? Because it was interesting looking. This is still before SMSL sort of like found their footing. They were still just throwing out random ideas. Oh my God, the element. If you don't know the JDS Labs element, then you don't, you don't deserve to know the element. Because JDS Labs is amazing work. And the element came out and it was like this all-in-one giant knob on top. I have like two of them in the basement. But that was the element. That was a DAC amp combo. And it sounded like better than almost anything. It was just, that's one of the reasons. That's why the Aris Huron was just not important. Why do I need this? This like $400 unit that's a combo, DAC and amp is blowing away this like $1,000 just amp. I didn't understand why I needed it. That was better. And the Element 2 is out now and still better than most things. Like there's only a handful of DAC amp combos that I am legitimately, like I will tell you you need to buy, like the combo unit. Elements 1, you can get that or you can get the separates. And the um, IFI Zendak is another one. That's just like, you have to get it. It's a combo, it doesn't matter. And also now the Matrix Mini-I, which I should go whip out. The Z review of the Brondell Swash 1000. So I was on a, like a, um, I guess I would call it a bidet kick for a bit, where I wanted to find an even better bidet from the, the other bidet, because I had like, I forget what order I bought things in. I had the Bio Bidet BB800 which was like the entry level bio bidet, the little tank to fill water, to scoot your butt. And then I bought the Brondell Swash 1000, which is like a $450 bidet that had infinite hot water. The problem was it just, it was like spraying. It was just like a spray. It was just like a spray. It couldn't do, it didn't have the right things. It had a remote. It was kind of weirdly shaped. I ended up, and this is going to sound disgusting, but I ended up using it, trying it for like three days and going, nope, Put back my old bidet, um, boxed it up, and asked my sister if she wanted it. And she's like, you're going to, I, I would come visit your house and use your bidet. So why the fuck wouldn't I accept a brand new one in my house? So my sister has that bidet. She loves it. Everybody in my family has a bidet. My brother and sister, I can't get my cousin. He, ref Jay Cooks, refuses. He's like, it'll just make my ass warm, wet and warm, and I don't want that. And I'm like, 
to each their own. I, I can't live without the bidet helping me go poo. You should all think about this. Um, that computer, don't, don't look up there. Don't look up there, but look down there at that computer. There's the build for it. Four years ago. I just added RAM to it last week. It had 16 from f when I built it, and I added another 16. So now it's got 32. I actually went and found, I went and found, they used the link in that video, the exact same Amazon link to buy the exact same RAM. It was still for sale, like a hundred and, it was expensive. It was, it was either take two sticks of RAM out, two eight gig dims, throw them away, and put two 16s in, or buy another two eight gig dims and have four slots filled. So that's what I did. I did the four slot thing because I don't want to throw away RAM for no reason because you know I'm not going to use it again in anything else. Don't kid yourself. That, by the way, if you ever are bored for two hours and watch me literally build a computer from parts on a table to it's running, there you go. Uh, what do we got here? Ooh, the Fostex X100 Ebony, TH600s, and the D2000s. So we got Fostex, Fostex, and Denon. X100s, Purple Heart, that's it. And it's like a different tuning end wood. It's not just the wood. And if it's just the wood, then Purple Heart is a fucking amazing wood and all its headphones should be made out of it. But the uh, Purple Hearts are amazing, Fostex. The TH600s, honestly, are boring Fostex. And the, the Denon D2000s were very, very finite. They kind of like remind me of Elex. And that's going completely from memory. They were like a very fine, like, like they had a good bass response and they were, they got up really high. Like it, it was a lovely, lovely way to listen to things. None of them beat the uh, Emutiques, but I mean, that was close. Holy shit, the Bucard S300s. The first Bucard. Insurmountably the, the speaker company that impresses me the most every time. Like Swan, Bucard. Uh, Klipsch has had some on and offs, but what are the other speakers that are like Triangle had some on and offs? Yeah, I'm pretty sure Bukart's never gave me a stinker. Those motherfuckers, the S300s, just redefined my uh, opinion on speakers. Like that's it. There's there's the 97,000 views. I'm amazed I didn't write my favorite speakers on this or like best speakers I've ever heard because they would have deserved it. Absolutely, 100% would have deserved it. They still have for a passive speaker some of the best low end response I've ever heard. Pass the speaker with a port, not even some sort of funky rear thing. God, I gotta pull those out and use them. I have all these speakers in the basement and part of the wall video, but I'll at least like to get them out and use them. Uh, Sonic, all right, Sonic MH463s slash status audio OB1s, which were a very short lived attached wire. That particular set of Sonics had like mold on the thing. It was they were built very strangely, and there's been several. Some people are even saying that the um, the modern day, the Mackie uh, MC 450s, the ones that I really like, are based sort of on that. And you know what? I can't deny they don't. They look pretty similar, but the sound is completely different. the uh, The Status OB ones were good. The Sonics were just a clone. And if I'm, I'm going to link in the description of this video, which if you go to the description, I everything I talk about, I link or don't link. If I link it, it's probably worth buying still. If I don't link it, it's just the name of it, it's probably not worth buying. So I won't link the Somics. I might link the status, and I'll definitely link the uh, MC450s because those things don't get enough love in the whole world. Speaking of love in the whole world, while wow, we're having just, a, oh my God, we're getting to the M40Xs. Okay. Samson Z55s. Sent to me my company, $200, $250, I forgot. I gave them to my uncle so we could use them to sleep. Because they were built like poo, but they sounded really good. They sounded at least as good as you would hope a $200 set of monitoring cans would sound. That's not cheap. That's not 80 bucks. It's not 60 bucks. It's not 100 bucks. That's 200 plus dollars. Monitoring can, that was quality shit. And I think I changed the pads out to something that was like brainwaves to get the comfort going, because that doesn't look like the stock pad at all. And yeah, no, I really liked them, but they were so fun. In fact, I met the guys at like a can jam. There was a Samson booth at can jam and they had those there. I'm like, hey guys, look, these things sound great. You see this? Looks like crap, fix it. Like I just dropped the, the truth bombs on them right there because that's what you Zeos do. Um, Audio-Technica, ATH, M40X, AKA fuck M50X even more, I think is what it says is the title. Even harder. 
So this has 571,000 views. That's one of my most popular videos. And I don't know if it's because I have the word fuck in there with a copyright logo. Maybe I'll put the word fuck in the title of every one of my videos now. But um, I sold so many M40Xs that it should have fucked the algorithm up on Amazon over the years. Because everybody, please raise your hand if you got to this part of the video and you, you bought M40Xs because of me and you love them. If you don't love them, reply to that comment with just like, hey, I, you know, I don't like them or the stock pads sucked. And, and I think I review these with the stock. The stock pads are on them. I really wish you would preview the video with the holdover. You know what it is? Firefox has that option because I have all sorts of shit. And Chrome is just stock. I remember bringing over... Um... <sighs> oh, yelling. Don't yawn with me. That means you're sympathetic. Um, not pathetic. Sympathetic. God. Somebody brought over. I was like, how the fuck are they doing this? How are they making this sort of low end? And I'm like, I don't know. Just put bigger pads on it. Just put bigger pads on it. Loft sound demo. Kanto Yumi sound demo. Bukhart S300 sound demo has thumbnail of Chewbacca. She's over there. Fluon signature sound demo. The Fluon signature bookshelves. I love how these are all in like weird order. I don't know what YouTube is doing, but they're doing it wrong. DMS, leave me, leave me be. Um, he went poo, by the way, today. A big, long message, and I, he deleted it before I could share it. Sorry, everyone. Um, Fluence Signature Bookshelves. <sighs> These give me pause, as I just showed you, because they looked good, and I think they were technically better than, like, SX6s, but I like the SX6s more. I always did. These were, like, creeping toward... The, these sort of... And this is going to be the biggest insult that I've ever done to a Fluon set of speakers. The Fluon signature bookshelves kind of sounded like Polk. They were just like that. Oh, that's nice. Like, that's nice. That's fine. It's fine and nice. It's nice and fine. Like, they were definitely, they, they didn't have, they lost the charm of that huge box with the rear port. They had the front ports, and they had probably a more refined tweeter, and they had a phase plugs, and that was nice. And they did it, but... Like, I didn't love them. I never were like, oh man, I want to use these forever. As soon as I was done with that review, I took them away. Like, all right, they did a decent job with these speakers. The end. And that's the worst. That's the death note from Zeos. Is if I am just, if you are competent but boring, I don't care. I look at your resume and it's got all these things. And you have six years experience. And you come to work for me and you're polite. and You're boring me. You're boring me. I'm not asking for an employee that burns my house down. But, you know, someone who just screams, fuck you! every once in a while it's that's interesting at least that gives me something to do it and those speakers were not that those were not that the canto yumis which they used to sell passive speakers they have active and passive my sister also took the bidet and i gave her the active uh, canto yumis for her television because fuck having television speakers were i guess in a similar vein to the fluence which is competent they were they were very pretty look look color color actually like nice and i talked to canto about bringing back pass and they're like now we're going all active so they brought up the tux at the point where they were saying that so they're probably going to stick with that shame because really all it takes to make an active speaker a passive speaker is take the amp out the back and put a plate which is what they used to do and i still have the yumi passes the blue ones probably the most used speaker in my old house my old apartment because they were hooked up to the sonos connect amp the like $500 thing. And those just sat in my kitchen on a rack. And every morning at 9 a.m., they just slowly started playing whatever playlist was on, usually funk. Sometimes you, you could eat, dance, sleep, fuck to funk. Funk music. Just ask Spotify to play funk. And you could do any activity to funk. You could work in your car. You could just chill out. You could like cook to it. It's, it's the only genre that you could do everything to. And um, so they played for like two hours every morning from 9 to 11. And if I woke up and I didn't want to hear it, I hit the button or told it to stop, turn off the kitchen speakers. And it was great. So I, I enjoyed those thoroughly. The Denon sound demo, Fostex sound demo, sound demo. Oh, my God. That two-hour build did not include the graphics card because it hadn't arrived yet. But everything else had arrived. So I waited. And now that is in there. And that's the graphics card sticking out the edge. And it doesn't fit. That case is so small that the actual power adapters stick out and right angles won't work. They need to be like an eighth inch higher right angles. Beats Solo 2. Wait, was this the pair that I actually didn't hate? I did I did two 
I've done two Beats headphones in this channel. And the first one was garbage. It shook. It had literally metal weights in it to make it feel more expensive. It was uncomfortable. It was a bass cannon. And then I did another one, and I think it might have been the Solo 2. And it wasn't as bad. It wasn't earth shattering. It was still too expensive. And it was still a Beats headphone, but it like was built much better. And it had like a toned down stupid sound. It wasn't that like repetitive, like, oh my God, burst, 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 Beats, bro. Beats by bro, bro. It was better. It was just like an average headphone. It could have been um, um, M-Pow, and I've been like, all right, it was all right. It was all right. It didn't bring absolute hatred to my eyes. Unlike the Sennheiser Game Zero. Pretty sure I hated those. I, You know what? I did the Game Zeros and the Game Ones, and I don't think I like any Sennheiser gaming headphones ever made, ever, 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 ever. Because I did the GSP-500s recently, and oh my God, did those suck. I don't know why Sennheiser can make so many good headphones. I don't have any on my desk right now. But Sennheiser can make so many good headphones, and they can't just put a microphone on it. You have to go to drop has to be like, hey, hey, give us this one. Give us a PC38X. We should put a microphone on it. There, we fixed it. Thank God drop exists, or Sennheiser would not have any respect for me at all for gaming, for specifically made gaming headphones. 58X, great. 6XX. 600, 600, 600, 600, they do gaming with. But, you know, there are headphones out there that people can game in, but they're not gaming headsets by them. Um, the Chord Moho, or the Chord Mojo. I want to slightly apologize, because I did yell a lot in this video, because it that literally pissed me off. The unit holding it angered me, because it was so up its own ass that, like, it just, I, I hated the people who used them, I hated everything about it, how their marketing was. Like I got, I did research into it and I just hated it. It represented everything I dislike about the audio world. It was like $750. It had only unbalanced three and a half millimeter out. And it was just this huge, heavy box you're supposed to carry around with you. But you know, it's gonna, it has the most, what's the fucking things that Gord is known for? Nits, mitts, ITs, like the transistors. It's got the most, it's got the most, it's obviously the best. And I, that was the exact, roughly the same time as the um, the first X Duo X Duo Five had come out, and I'm like, well, this is like a hundred and ninety dollars or two hundred dollars, which is five hundred dollars less, and I like it more. And it's it's always about price and performance number one, and then just not being an asshole number two, and having holding the cord mojo in my hand and knowing that they're like fifty that like they have those crazy expensive ones. You go to every show and they're just, I don't know, pretentious is just the word. And I hate pretentious audio shit. I hate it. That's why I like these. Fucking Grado uh, GW100s are just, by the way, uh, pads and pads. Just those are, no one expects them. They're $200 or 250 So it's a little pricey, but no one expects them to be good and they're fucking great. And that's like, oh my God, it is the second coming of Jesus. And it's not. It's a lot of power. And it's got cool little marbles you could spin around, glass marbles. But that's it. That was all it was. Speaking of shit I hate, oh my god. Audio-Technica ATH-M70X murder cans. I wonder if I'm getting demonetized because the word murder is in the title. Usually they look for like the word murder and they're like, nope. Although so many true crimes videos are out there. So the murder of Humphrey Bogart or something would probably be out there. Um, I just said the M40Xs. So up until that point, I was not really in love with Audio-Technica. 2000X, loved it. 900X, loved it. 500X, loved it. M50X, twice, fuck you. And then M40X was like a godsend. And then M70X, I was looking forward to them. And that's what hits me the worst, when I'm looking forward to something. Because like, all right, look, the M40Xs are great. So maybe the M50s were bad. Let's do the M70s with their metal and they're beautifully built and they're much more smaller. And, and oh my fucking God. God! <clears throat> so much treble, you just, goodbye. That's it. Just, they were just treble. Treble incarnate. Fio Q1 is a little tiny amplifier that I don't recognize nor have any remembrance of. Oh my God, wait, the Fio Q1. Holy fuck, my brain. The Fio Q1 and the Fio Q1 Mark II and then the Fio Q3 is the, oh my, that's, that's the origin story right there. 
I don't remember it. I don't remember uh, the second generation. You get way more out of it than that one. But yeah, no, I, I guess I gave it a positive review, 63,000. Uh, the Grace M9XX Mass Drive Exclusive. This is like one of the first Mass Drive Exclusive things when Grace just kept pairing with them. And I had a little screen and multiple inputs and a top knob. And it was more expensive than the Element, the JDS Labs Element, which I just did earlier. And therefore, if it's more expensive than an Element and it's as good as an Element, why do I care? And it's another one of those companies. Grace is less, less cord mojo-y. But Grace is still like, <laughs> our maids will bring you a thing. So it's like, all right, I get it. I get it. You're a high-end brand. High-end audio brands bother me, just in general. I don't like high-end audio brands. They just become an audio brand. Just just be honest with yourself. Um, high Fibane Edition S, they're on the shelf on the other side of this wall. They are the strangest of high, they're the biggest departure for high fi men because they're a portable dynamic and they try to do this thing with detachable rear plates to make it closed or open. And when you close them, they sounded like ass. And when you open them, they sounded pretty fucking good. And they had a single side three and a half millimeter. And they had a, a trapezoidal pad, which was like flat on top. But then it like went down to be under your earlobe. So it was almost like ear shaped. And they, they hugged your head really close so that it didn't look bad. Like they actually looked good and sounded good. And I, I wish more people bought them because I remember taking those on vacation. I was in Cape May, New Jersey with my brother. It was his birthday and my friend came down and I had those. I just went for a walk with them. It was fucking great. I, I don't hate those hi fi men. Bring them back. Bring back a better new set using modern technology and make them Bluetooth. Hell, I'm asking a company to make a headphone that I like Bluetooth because those in the same exact shape and everything, but with Bluetooth and make them open back too because I'm, I'm getting this open back uh, Bluetooth vibe that I've got going on. We are three minutes away from me timer running out. Me timer. I am me caveman. Um, DIY speedster, DIY speedsters. I met a man in a parking lot, all right, at a mall. To This was like the first weird someone handed it to me thing. It wasn't a company sending it to me or me buying it. It was like, hey, I have these speakers that I built from this kit. Do you want to review them? And I'm like, okay. And I had to like get dropped off at a mall. Was I driving at that point? I don't remember if I had my own car at that point, but yeah, it was like, okay. And I met this guy at a mall and he gave me the speakers and we sat at like a Chipotle and talked about speakers and then he left. And then at some point I had to return them to him and it was very strange, but those were the first DIY speaker. I think were fantastic. You, you get a real good taste of like what DIY can do. They just were impossible to drive. They needed so much power for just small, I think like 120 watts per channel. And so they couldn't get very loud. But, you know, super high quality tweeter, high quality driver, well-designed box. And I'm like, why can't people make this speaker? And they were heavy as shit too. So that's that was the little DOI Speedsters. And um, so I recommended them, but they were like, weren't you have to like buy a kit from like 19 different spots to get it. Um, ooh, am I gonna end on the little dot? I think I'm gonna be ending on the little dot. All right, little dot one plus, the smallest of the little dots, the little tubey amp that could. Oh my God, it's playing, the, wait, why is that one playing now? What the fuck is this shit? So I have the dark voice there and I've got that. And for some reason I've got that, which is sitting over there, which is the Oppo Ha 2 is sitting right there. And I'm, I'm doing this to tubes Oh, and there's the little speakers in the background, and there's the thing. Got it. I had a four years ago. To from, you have no idea. My brain cannot handle the four years ago difference from there to here, to this place. Um, I don't remember. Honestly, I don't remember. I, I was arguing probably that the dark voice was more of a tube amp, but I mean, come fucking on, Steve. Zio is from back in the day. Look at the little tiny thing. It was probably a hundred bucks. How could I argue that the dark voice was better? But it was. The Dark Voice is legitimately better. Dark Voice is still a quality, like it's still like the tube amp. Like I want to get into tubes. You buy a Dark Voice. If you can't afford a Dark Voice or you don't want to start swapping tubes like what you have to do with the Dark Voice, get a little dot, keep the stock tubes. It sounds tubey enough. You'll be happy. It's cute. It's cute to look at. 
All right, I'm gonna start this one because we'll start on a subwoofer for next time. The IFI ICANN SE, uh, phenomenal cosmic power. I didn't finish the itty bitty living space quote from Robin Williams. That amplifier is, I'm gonna pause this now. Yeah, I got it. That amplifier is basically the benchmark for every portable amplifier. In fact, I just did the signature version of the IFI IDSD signature, where it's just I, I everything, IFI, I, F, F, I, S, S, Eva. And they're all just that box, which is way too big for portability. Like that's fine for like a laptop bag or box, but people are strapping this shit to their phone. That's too much. You've gone too far, but that's what they do. And they have that weird plug in the Mac and they have way too much power coming out of the quarter inch. They finally have balanced outputs now, finally. And they're like $600 I think that was like 300 bucks. And, but it does have the switch for 3D and it had the base boost switch. And that was enough to make me want to tell you to buy it. And it's big enough that if you did want to just buy it for your desk, you don't look like an idiot. You don't look like an idiot who's just running a portable amplifier on a desk, like me and the Death Run Ray Honey H1. Like, so what idiot would just have, like, I mean, it's a pretty big portable amp, but what idiot would have a portable amp on their desk? I would. That's my desk amp, if I'm not using the Mo2 M2. I'm using that. So why not use that? Why not just get that, and then, in, in like, like, hey, you know what? I feel like I want to go someplace else and have good audio. Pick it up, unplug it, walk to that place and go. I just wish, it's been fucking years, IFI, put a fucking Bluetooth module in all your portables, all of them. Why do you have to make a specialty one that's like a little, like a tiny cheap $200? Give me the $600 monster with LDAC capabilities. Cause then it would make sense. I'd drop it in my pocket of my big heavy bubble down jacket with my gold chains and everything. And I just have my phone and my phone would just be sending its LDAC to that. And I can control it here and to turn the knob in my pocket if I have to. But no, IFI refuses to update that to the point where it has actual Bluetooth, which is like the last step. It's the final step, the final countdown. Anyway, that's it for this episode. We gotta remember where I ended. See us. You ended on the IFI ICANN SC Phenomenal Cosmic Powers. Don't forget you gotta do the Bic America F12 or how I stopped, learned to st how I learned to stop worrying and buy a sub. Good title. I used to have good titles. Now I just do like weird little emojis. It's not great, but you know, you, you lose lose the spirit after a while. So, would I still recommend the new version of that? Yes, it's too good not to. It just it lacks the features that would make it a must fucking buy. A must buy. And next time we'll start on the sub. I've been Zios Pantera. If you want to support this channel. Uh, Hi-Fi hi Guides and the Hi-Fi Guides forums exist. Check those out. Um, we get like a lot of people on there. They're like 30,000 people a, a day or visit, which is nuts considering that like I only promo it here and it's just the community has built itself. That's a wonderful place, to, the way to look at it. It's a wonderful community that has built itself. Um, check out my Subscribestar and Patreon. Both have the same benefits. At $5 a month, you could see most reviews early, not this video, because this video doesn't really concern anyone like heavily. But if I review something that's gonna be like sold out tomorrow because oh my fucking God, that's one of the benefits. You get to see things early. You also get to participate in the yard sales. Yard sales happen from the first to the 10th of every month. I ship for free continental United States, half shipping and one third shipping international until COVID lets people fly in airplanes and the shipping goes down. So if you order something and you live in Denmark, and it cost me $250, it only costs you uh, $70 because I absorbed the bulk of the shipping. So hopefully you bid highly if you bid from Denmark. Someone actually did buy from Denmark. Um, if you want to ask me questions on the platform, feel free to join the $10 chat um, on Telegram. And that is available through subscribe to our Patreon where you get to ask me any questions you want. And I answer on my phone. In fact, do I have any people messaging me? always there's always messages so i'm going to go now to my patronage chat and if you can go through that through subscribe to our patreon and i'll answer your questions lickety split as soon as i'm done not recording things and losing my voice so yeah i think we're good now wallpaper by the way also available in the description and um we're done here and a normal regular probably boring video will be out tomorrow and for those of you who make it through all of these how do you do it is it drugs legal drugs illegal drugs 
Do you have nowhere else to be? That's a man reminiscing about his old reviews. This is wild. It's wild stuff.